Alrighty, so we're going to do some um, chain stitch embroidery with this 100 year old Wilcox and Gibbs type National and Eldridge chain stitch machine. I'm using 30 weight cotton uh, quilting thread. I'm using stabilizer that I have traced my fabric, uh, traced my design onto, and then I reverse the image because we are sewing on the back of our fabric. When we are done, the chain stitch embroidery will be on this side of the fabric. So the first thing I like to do is leave a nice long tail of the thread that helps me to weave in the ends to secure the stitching when I'm done. And with all sewing machines, you're gonna provide some tension with that, your first stitch or two. There we go. Now you can let go of that and just kind of keep it out of the way as you stitch. This machine, we have the treadle cabinet for it, but I find I really enjoy the control I get out of hand stitching, hand cranking it. When you're going down a straight line or a gentle curve, you can kind of pick up the speed. I'm going to show you how to pivot here. We're going to get to the end of the cardinal's wing. Put the needle at its lowest down position. Raise your presser foot, just like regular sewing. You're going to pivot, and you're going to start forward again. And we can make some nice, nice speed on a pretty straight line. I'm going to move this out of the way so I'm not stitching over it. We'll come up here to the cardinal's crest. I'm going to slow down. Do some turning. If you'd like, you can pivot for one stitch. And then turn and go the other way. If you want a nice sharp point, you go ahead and pivot all at one time. Pivot here for his bill. Move this thread out of the way. You can use continuous line quilting designs. You can use um, simple line drawings. Anything that gives you a continuous path. Come up here and meet this. Now we're going to do a big pivot. pivot Move that needle all the way down all right and you'll notice when I'm doing the gentle curves I don't stop with the needle down and lift the presser foot I find that the tension works just as well on something gentle like this that I just keep turning and kind of turn the fabric as I go Now we're going to come back up to where the design started and we're going to meet our original stitching. So we're going to go slow. All right, we're going to, that's my last stitch. I'm going to bring the needle to its highest point, needle bar all the way up. And I'm going to manually release some tension so that I have very long thread tails for weaving in. It's very annoying to cut the thread too short and then you don't have anything to weave in to secure your stitching. Stop stitching, needle bars at the highest point, lift the presser foot and you're going to gently, very gently pull this out. Okay, and the thing I do is I leave as much thread as twice as long as the tail I want. A long tail here at the end of my design and a long tail to begin the next design. And to pull this out of here, you're going to have two threads down here and you're going to separate them and this back thread is what you're going to gently pull and it comes through and then your design is released. This is where we stitched. It is the back. And here is the chain stitch embroidery on the front of your quilt block. Yeah. You'll have one thread on the back here after you pull the stabilizer off that you will sink through, do like a back stitch through the material and everything and then weave it back through these threads to secure it. And on this side you have all the beautiful chain stitch and you'll take this thread and make sure you don't run it back through the same stitch where you un unsew it but you can sink it back through the material like a back stitch and then uh, run it through to secure it. 
like I said, this is size uh, 30 weight cotton thread. Be careful, some of the brands of modern 30 weight thread, are, the spools are too tall or too broad to fit on the spool pen. Um, you can see a completed cardinal. This is a chain stitch side. And this is the side that it was sewn on once the stabilizer is removed. And the stabilizers help to keep your fabric taut. You can start your fabric if you'd like, but I notice with these stabilizers, I don't have to. And if you have any little whiskers left of the stabilizer, they're on the wrong side of the fabric. They're not going to show on the front of your quilt block, but they're fairly easy to remove, and I find that I don't have trouble with them tugging the stitches out of shape when I remove them. It's easy tear by, uh, I think, Pellon. If you wanted to use thicker threads, I did this several years ago when this machine was in a treadle. And once again, I said I find that I like the control of the hand crank better than the treadle. This was a cotton tatting thread, and you can see how much, how much I can't, more prominent that I design can't, is. You need to make it parallel with the front of the lens. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is a tea towel done with variegated uh, cotton quilting thread, King Tut. You want to be very careful running those ends in on that so that the uh, design doesn't unravel itself. Okay. And you can also do your embroidery on colors of fabric. All of these have been done on a white background with a dark thread. So here I've got lighter greens with black thread and darker greens with white thread. And this design, this is called the Sheep Meadow, would probably show up better at a distance if I'd used a thicker thread and a thicker needle like the tatting thread. But I find that I, I like the, um, I can make nice shapes and curves with this thinner thread. I have my machine set at 12 stitches to an inch. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.